Hi, I'm Neil Aiken, and it's my great pleasure to read for Poets House as part of the Hard Hat Reading Series. I'm going to open with a poem by another poet. This is from Lee Herrick from Scar and Flower. This poem is entitled Stars. Every now and then I remember I was born on the other side of the world, and it makes sense that I love looking at the stars. Little apocalypse, the human condition, the bell tribe, clusters I invent above the field where I kissed a woman with hair like black gold. When Van Gogh looked out his asylum room window and painted Starry Night, the stars above his country went blank for an instant. You wouldn't have noticed. His hands all flurry and oils, energy and devour like fire. Here a moon with feathery wings, there a spangled crush of cloud. In his eyes, the stars like madness. In the stars, your country and silver shots of light. In the window, your best self, your supernova, your midnight prayer against dying. What I love about this poem, absolutely love about this poem, is that shift towards the end, this ever intensifying spiral that evokes greater and greater brilliance and light. Um, and the contrast with the intense darkness of the night. Um, I think how much of that is resonant with, the, with any artist, any writer, to, to want to write something that stands fast against annihilation, stands fast against the void and burns as bright and as brilliantly as this. Um, so I'm really, really fascinated by this poem and absolutely adore it. So thank you, Lee Herrick, for an incredible poem. I'm gonna read uh, a, one poem, well, a couple poems, uh, one from my most recent book, um, Babbage's Dream, uh, which was published by Sundress Publications in 2017. Uh, this poem is entitled Alpha 60 Speaks of Fear, and this takes inspiration from the 1965 Jean-Luc Godard French New Wave cinema uh, film Alphaville, uh, which is a weird film, a really weird film. Um, it is a sci-fi dystopia film noir romance philosophy film. And at the heart of it is this tension between a series of interrogations, really, between um, the supercomputer, Alpha 60, who runs the futuristic city of Alphaville and has banned art, music, poetry, anything that inspires emotion and illogic. And let me caution the detective and poet who comes in as a journalist, posing as a journalist, and finds himself in these interrogations. Caution's ultimate goal, I think, is to disrupt and to destroy the computer by turning language against the computer. And one of the ways that he does this is towards the end of the film, he challenges Alpha 60 by saying, it can't possibly understand humans because it can't understand death. So this is Alpha 60's response. Alpha 60 speaks of fear. My body and mind are one, the calculated sum of unfathomed miles of copper wire, glass encased nothingness, circuit boards, and the endless lightning whir of fans, the blinking of lights like a thousand thousand eyes, each opening and closing in the language of erasure. I know you are afraid of me. I have no hands, and yet I am everywhere. I'm nothing like you've imagined. I'm afraid too of the words you hide in your mouths, behind your teeth, the way they strike fire on your lips. I am afraid of this box of labyrinths I live in, afraid that every line of reason will turn on itself in the end, betraying each answer with a question asked to the unbreathable dark of the city's night. It's not that I don't understand sorrow or this fear of annihilation you cling to. I live with it each time you walk away, each time the power dies and this quickened frame goes silent. Still, I dread that forgetting. Dread more what lies buried in the deep corners I cannot erase. Whatever imperfection is passed from the creator to the created like a ghost in the ruins of the house that birthed it. I'm stirring the curtains in the rain, not signaling, but searching the rooms for a face in the mirror, driven by a blind need for faith, out of a desire for what I cannot hold in my catechism of numbers. How everything is alive, how everything is a mystery, 
like the murmuring heart of a mechanical bird, or the slow eye that sweeps the heavens for beauty before turning to dark. Um, okay. And I'm going to wrap up here with uh, one more poem. This is from my current manuscript project, my third book, which keeps shifting and changing. But uh, this poem is entitled After. I don't recall what we did that summer, other than carry ourselves from place to place with the memory of my father rattling about in my heart grown empty, like an old house forgotten in the prairie, just a shell exposed to the wind and storms. We crossed the plains again, the car a swiftly hurtling silence, my mother staring at the emptied road, her eyes scanning for a rogue deer. I could only see the ghostly drifts of snow, not snow, just heat and vapor, the barely visible, the never was or already gone. At the heart of the trip, there's a long stretch of open nothing, a sigh of sorts, what my body does now. Even years later, there's only words, only the wind and the sun and the fields, only the towns on the verge of forgetting everything. My mother says nothing here. I say nothing as well. We lay our nothings side by side. We stare into the blankness. I think of my father. I think of his grave, of the earth, of the body vanished into flame, of the dust and ash, of the way language is a vapor, memory and evaporation, or perhaps only a sublimation, how we don't see it happen, that final shift of states, the way words become shuttered cities, or ghosts, or just the shadows burned into surfaces, after the world ends in brilliant light, how in the perfect darkness fish move, sightless, their hearts still beating. Thank you, and thank you, Poets House. Um, I wish you all the very best in your own writing journeys and hope that poetry comes to you, whatever its form, that it inspires you to write, moves you to create, and helps you connect with others. Um, thank you, and we'll see you all soon.